Well, good morning. Welcome back, everybody. I, I will spend the next few minutes talking a little bit about the Euroflow databases. Uh, uh, Dr. Van Dohen already introduced uh, some of the um, information yesterday during his presentation, his opening presentation. So I would like to uh, emphasize some of these aspects uh, for you and probably um, uh, clarify a little bit uh, some information. So you uh, being exposed uh, a, a second time will be able to process uh, the, it a little bit better. You know that the Euroflow activities has been going on already for quite some time. It's uh, we are approaching 20 years of, of, uh, of life. And uh, as you can see in the screen, the, the production that we have uh, um, in, in print that's as paper that is available in the literature is uh, becoming quite important. And uh, but it's not certainly not limited to to all of these papers. There are more uh, production and more scientific uh, um, um, information that we have generated that is also available to you. But uh, what I would like to emphasize with this slide is that all of the uh, information that is contained in all uh, these papers, it's uh, uh, based on, a, on a, a specific strategy. And this is a, a problem solving strategy. So even if the uh, arrow certainly goes from the past to the future, uh, it, we actually uh, tend to think about the end, what, what is the end product that we would like to have and what is the end problem that we will have to solve. So by identifying the problem, we go back to organize and um, uh, design a specific strategy to solve that problem. So at the end of the day, what we uh, uh, generate, uh, the, the end product will be something that uh, helps you to um, or support you to, into uh, solving a specific root, uh, flow cytometry diagnostic or classification problem. In all of these uh, papers, you will find some common words and, and, and you are quite already familiar with it. Uh, we talked up frequently about applications, techniques, panel configuration, sensitivity methodologies, and so on and so forth. But what is, um, I think, the most important common line in between all these in production is that all of these uh, problems that we identified are, are completed when we generate a reference database that help you to solve that particular that particular issue. So the, the final point of each one of our board package is the generation of a particular database and the strategy that goes along with it to, to help you solve a routine flow diagnostic problem. So if we want to, so if we would like to summarize this process, we start by making an analysis and planification and identifying what kind of the, what is the issue we, would, we have, where do we need to introduce um, innovation and standardization in, in flow cytometry diagnostics to then design a, a specific uh, panel configuration that help us to, to accomplish the task frequently and uh, also link this to a, part, a specific sample processing that uh, helps you again to solve the problem. And the final uh, topic would be how uh, all the above is working together in a, a correct analysis strategy and reporting strategy that, that can uh, um, help you to deliver the right, the right results. So as you can imagine, the building of the different databases this is not a trivial, a trivial process. It's a, a rather complex uh, procedure and, and we will, just to, to make a, a systematic uh, identification of the, of the different steps, even if the database will um, uh, work for a different, uh, to, to serve different strategies, they, they have some uh, steps in common. First, we need to select and stain the, the reference samples, and the reference samples can be of different natures. We uh, certainly one big uh, source of reference samples will be the normal uh, um, uh, samples, but we need to think about a, the type of normals that we want to include. And we need also to match those uh, normals according to the specific requirements of the disease. So it's not the same to have a, a, a multiple myeloma uh, database since the normal should be bone marrows or having an LST uh, database, which in the normals can be either bone marrow or peripheral blood. And certainly we should not use the uh, reference uh, data generated in the peripheral blood to uh, uh, be used in a bone marrow samples. So in, on top of that, we need to also uh, select what the population group 
uh, the target uh, population group that we will need to incorporate. So we'll need to decide whether we could use a different age group or in different circumstances. Also reactive samples are, are included in this phase. Then we, uh, after we gather all these uh, reference samples, also sometimes some disease samples that can work for the classification database, we need to inspect these uh, files or this acquisition for uh, the technical quality. So make, make sure that uh, from a, a, an individual perspective uh, of each one of these files, all of the steps has been uh, taken care of, the panel is complete, the staining pattern is correct, the compensation issues are, are all solved. And if this, if this is the case, we proceed with the analysis. And as you can imagine, the analysis also goes uh, with a very a highly standardized way, often limited to a, a, cert, a, a, a very restricted group of people that follows the analysis. So we make sure that we all will perform the analysis in the very uh, systematic and a, a, similar, a similar way so we can not only make sure that we generate re uh, reliable results, but also we need to understand that uh, if we have any problem, we can go back to the analysis strategy and understand what the problem was in the beginning and how, and how we can we can solve it. Uh, after all these initial steps are performed, then we incorporate uh, all the samples together in a single database, and we then evaluate then the whole set of samples again, all together and uh, search for biological or technical outliers. And those would be then uh, checked back with the original data to confirm that these are actually technical or biological outliers. And if they are meaningful for the um, di uh, different strategies or diagnostic or purpose of the database, they are kept because they, they, the databases need also to reflect the variability. But if they are fully technical outliers, they are uh, excluded from the, uh, the databases because we do not want to include any noise. And finally, we uh, after we are kind of happy with the, the, the product that we have in, in our hands, we uh, proceed to a prospective uh, validation of the databases that involve uh, us usage of newly acquired samples that are run through the database and, and the results and confirm. Uh, in general, if we have to, uh, for didactic reasons have to classify or, or, or distinct uh, uh, two different type of databases that we have available. We have some databases uh, meant to support automated gating uh, analysis strategy, and these are uh, meant to identify all the uh, populations present in the different type of samples that you may have. And for these a specific type of databases, certainly this, the source of reference uh, samples that should be included are in, in general terms, what we can call normal. And then we have the diagnostic classification databases, which are meant to, uh, once your abnormal population is identified, you should uh, uh, be able to uh, understand what type of population is involved and to what type of disease it belongs to. And for that, you need to, com to compare that the phenotypic profile of the whole panel with some reference uh, now disease samples to uh, uh, confirm whether it belongs to a particular group. So you need to be aware that the, the different types of information are then a, a part of these uh, databases. And certainly we have in one hand, the full phenotypic profile of each one of the populations that are contained in the sample for all of the markers in the combination. But also we have some uh, additional information uh, there included in the databases that are uh, important, which are the reference ranges. And this uh, also was mentioned by Dr. Van Donghen yesterday, in which we um, uh, divided uh, the, the population according to age groups in the way we understand that they should reflect all the normal, the normal ranges. And this is uh, very important. So any databases, the samples that are used for this part of the databases may not be the same that are used for this for this section. So sometimes we allow some kind of uh, flexibility in understanding that some for some databases we need a, a, a mainly a reference a phenotypic profile, while for other we also need age-related uh, cell population distributions, and, and for some of them we we need uh, both. 
But whenever this is a, a requirement, uh, this is incorporated in the strategy and, and taken care of to, during the database um, uh, development. So one of the examples that we have for the automatic gating and identification would be the bone marrow LST example in which we uh, uh, certainly use uh, bone marrow samples with the LST combination. And we uh, the first step is to identify all of the different populations present in the sample in, in the way you see in the screen. Then the population is classified either as normal or uh, abnormal. And we'll be uh, talking about this a little bit more further uh, in the presentation. And in this particular database, in this particular database, we use uh, uh, 92 samples to validate the database. So the database was built upon uh, a little bit more than 50 samples as a reference. And we use 92 samples to validate them. And uh, from the 82 samples that were uh, um, actual chronic lipoperiphatic disorders, we got a 100% of concordance with the uh, uh, of these abnormal samples that were alarmed or highlighted by the database based on the two phenotypic criteria uh, on the two criteria that I just mentioned. One would be either because the population shows a phenotypic deviation. And secondly, E4, because the population shows a numeric alteration that does not correspond to the age-matched uh, group of reference. The next example that I would like to show is uh, one of the diagnostic databases uh, that is for the uh, ALOT, uh, acute leukemia orientation tube, in which the reference database was built with more than 650 uh, samples and validated with a set of even uh, higher number of, of disease. Um, uh, samples. And here, as you can imagine, the reference uh, files are um, uh, built upon uh, deceased uh, uh, samples. What we, the results that we, this, the summary of the results that we obtained with this validation that is that we had an, an concordance with the expert of more than 90%, in more than 90% of the cases, and the accuracy on the panel selection of 100%. Remember that this is an orientation tube that is meant to, uh, as, a, as the title says, orientate on the on the what kind of uh, what set of markers you should stain afterwards to make sure that you optimize all your diagnostic strategy. And the final example is the most recently published uh, database, which is the classification uh, for B chronic lipoperiphatic disorders. In this case, the, the the database was constructed with 170 um, samples, reference samples, disease samples as well, and validated with almost 500 of, of, new, of new samples. The uh, strategy that we have introduced for this classification database is that you compare your uh, population of abnormal cells against, uh, against reference uh, group. And whenever you get a match uh, with a particular reference group, a, a disease reference group uh, systematically in every single one of the comparisons, you get uh, a, a final diagnostic set. And for that, the positive predictive value of the database is uh, uh, more than 95% in these disease categories, but in the other is uh, uh, above 90% as well. If the sample, uh, if your abnormal population does not fit uh, systematically for a single uh, mm -hmm reference group, then you have a negative predictive value of more than 92% to uh, exclude that particular reference diagnostic. So this is the last uh, database that we have uh, published uh, uh, at the end of last year, and that it is also now included in the Infinity software. So to make to, to bring a little bit closer the, the process of the database, uh, what, what go, goes on uh, behind the curtains when you run the, the database for the um, uh, automatic uh, uh, population identification or gating. This is the, the systematic of what, uh, what happens. We start then with the raw file and after we introduce our, uh, this raw file in the system, a clustering process start. And these first three steps that are uh, highlighted in red in the screen are uh, user independent and combination independent. So it's fully applying mathematical algorithms to uh, su support this part of the of the AGNI uh, databases. 
after the clusters are made, every single cluster is compared to uh, the, the different populations in the in the reference database, and then it is classified either, as I mentioned before, in the normal uh, group of uh, um, uh, populations that you have here in the screen. And if you take a closer look, and I will highlight it now so you uh, notice it, uh, you can see that the cloud of uh, B cells here are less represented than the cloud of B cells in the original row file. And this is because some of those B cells that are um, identified there are not placed under the normal tag, but uh, are placed in the check in the check populations. And if you also take a closer look to the um, how these check populations are composed, there are several, several different populations highlighted here, but you see one single one of them that is highly represented, that is the mature, uh, kappa expressing B cells, and this is likely the one that contains the uh, set of abnormal cells. So you will be able to see them, confirm that this is actually a, an abnormal population, and this is and then uh, um, now uh, user dependent because you have to validate the selection. After you validate the selection, what you usually do is that you proceed with the reporting, and the reporting is nothing more than to compare uh, um, these, uh, is, this is what you do in your mind. You compare your abnormal population to, to, to what you have in your mind that is uh, your reference and you describe your phenotyp the phenotypic profile according to this comparison. So if you can do that in your head, we can uh, uh, teach the computer on how to do that. So we use the mean fluorescent intensity uh, values and we compare not only the, the value that we obtain with the reference database, but also with some internal references in the in the sample to make the process uh, more accurate. So whenever the value that you get here is in the lower end of the reference database or in the in the lower end of the internal internal reference, then it is described as a, a expression that is low or even negative, and it, it is uh, beyond three standard deviations of what the databases are uh, the, the information that is built in the database. And then all this information is translated automatically into a report. And this will be a, a very complex algorithm that uh, um, uh, shows how all these processes is, was designed and then placed in the uh, and program in the software. So the report that is generated, this is nothing uh, uh, rocket science, it's what we actually do when we report or that we actually should be doing when we report one of these samples. In this case, this is a PyDot um, databases and we need to evaluate every single of these steps uh, individually, manually, and uh, make a conclusion out of it. And this is the work that has been taken out of our shoulders, uh, but it's now being done automatically. And after all these uh, different uh, process, processes uh, take place, the final report is generated. The final report is described um, patient data that can be customizable, the list of population and the distribution that you have both uh, in the relative and, uh, and uh, absolute counts if the, if the type of samples allows to do, to do that. And we have constructed some comments that are built uh, upon this data also uh, automatically and a summary on the, of the conclusion of the whole analysis. And I'm almost uh, reaching the final the final slides, but I, I, I always like to uh, uh, finish with this uh, slide that this is uh, in this case for the multiple myeloma uh, uh, AGNI uh, database, in which what I, I would like to show is that uh, uh, you uh, the benefit of using the database is that you double the, the information that you get because you identified uh, based on this uh, automatic gating and identification process, you identify uh, double the, the, the population that you usually do if you follow a manual analysis strategy. And the time you expend is cut by half. So you get almost four times the, the efficiency of the, whole, of the whole procedure. To finish, this is a, a, a display to, or it shows what are the databases currently available in the software. We have a, a two databases for disease monitoring, BCP, ALL um, database and multiple myeloma. Then we have a three uh, screening level uh, databases, ALOT, LST and PDOT. 
And we have a disease classification uh, database, which is uh, built up on the LST and the rest of the BC LPD uh, um, panels. And you have all of them already available within the Infinisite. So as a conclusion, we uh, should uh, now know that the Euroflow databases are robust, accurate uh, tools that support the analysis in the screening, classification, and follow-up of existing dermatological conditions, and uh, it, they, that they contribute to a more systematic, standardized, fast, and, uh, and the reporting phase of the routine flow cytometry studies. Thank you very much. And... With this, I hand over again to Thomas to continue with the program.